Hey guys, my name is Jonas Saalbach. Welcome to a new Studio Jam for Production Music Live. I have also recorded a masterclass with the guys, like a very detailed insight, one of my album tracks, Transformation. I think that's very interesting for you. We speak about mixing, we speak about sampling using analog gear and arrangements. So go and check this out. Today we are doing a Studio Jam. I don't know the samples I'm using. So everything's like really free and uh, in the jam. And I guess there will be some parts where I'm searching for a sound or an idea. So this might be a bit boring for you. Just go and get a coffee or stay with me. Um, before we start, I would like to show you my studio a little bit and the analog hardware I'm using for that jam. So I hope that's interesting for you. And as same uh, with the last session, you can ask me anything in the comments below. Thank you. Okay, so I have a lot of uh, analog synthesizers here. Everything's connected with Ableton Live going into my computer. Before that, I'm using uh, two interfaces from UHD. So all my synthesizers go into those interfaces and then I have them on separated channels. Uh, maybe we just start from right to left. Here I'm using the Electron model samples where I've loaded uh, my own samples. It's like a drum machine kind of thing. Another drum machine is my analog rhythm. This is more like a synthesizer, so you don't need samples. It has like a very punchy kick drum and toms and hi-hats. Then my innovation peak. This is like already looked very fucked up because I use this also for my live set, so I'm constantly traveling with that. Wonderful piece. Um, I'm using this for lead synthesizers and pads. I can really recommend this one. Um, another lead synthesizer is my Prophet 6. Um, I think you all know that it has a very characteristic smooth warm sound. Then I have here two effects. That's like a delay and a reverb from Strymon where I can plug all my synthesizers into it if I want to and then record it with the effects. And that's possible because of my patch bay. So all my synthesizers and all the effects are connected on the patch bay. And then I can just connect them with those cables. And I have here like my signal flow from the whole studio. You have an SH-02, like the copy from the SH-101. Uh, I'm surprised, this sounds really good. Really, really nice bass acid synthesizer. And here on the left of my synth desk, I have the famous Sub-37, which I use for basses. The Juno 6, which I use for kind of pad 80 sound. And here an JX-3P, which is at the moment not connected. <laughs> cool, here I have some percussions, so I'm also recording my drums here and there. And yeah, that's basically my setup. Here, the last piece I would like to show you, that's my summing box. So I go out of Ableton with groups, for example, kick, bass and drums. And this goes into the summing box and then I record the whole song so i'm not bouncing anymore i go out of the computer and then back into the computer what's different i have the feeling i can hear a little bit more detailed and the sound feels a bit more transparent um, so yeah that's basically my setup and now let's have a jam in this video i didn't speak at all during the jam so i decided to overdub later that i can more fall into the production while I'm freestyling this track. First of all, I go through all the samples from the Production Music Live sample pack and was looking for one loop I would like to start my song with. They have some really good loops here, very inspiring and I really like that they are in a certain kind of key and that I can see the BPM here. So this is my pick, a kind of guitar loop. A 
First I'm just messing around a little bit with the sample and see what I can do with it. Also duplicated, use this transient shaper to shorten the sound and just transpose up and down just to see what's possible. The sample doesn't have to be like it is, so just mess around with effects and whatever, you know, just sample it and make something new out of it. It doesn't have to be, but it's possible. This feels almost like percussion loop. On the left, you can see the first channel is always like a sidechain kick that's muted, but I can route it like on compressors, for example, to sidechain the sample. This is the bassism. A very simple but really helpful tool to create kicks. You can choose like the frequency, the length, the decay, distortion, and you have like an envelope to shorten the kick. In my music it doesn't make sense to have like very long kicks because I sometimes use like long steady basses and it would just be too much in the low end. So I try to make the kick more punchy but not too long. A little dip around 200 heart is always helpful in the bass. If you're wondering why I'm sending all those channels on external out 5.6 and it doesn't go into the master chain, that's just because I'm using an analog summing gear mixer. That means that all my channels go out of Ableton into the summing box and then back into Ableton to record the whole channel. For this session not really interesting, but I just want to let you know why there is nothing on the master chain. Now I'm trying to find some percussions. Really like those samples, they're pretty deep and orchestral kind of vibe, what I really like to use at the moment. find some more. I want to have like a couple of different percussions that they speak to each other, like question answering. It's not always helpful to layer all the time sounds, but they can speak to each other. So here I'm just turned on the pitch because I like it more. And here I turned on the volume, like muted at some parts of the loop. Listen to both channels, to both percussion channels, like how they react to each other. My channels are all my analog synthesizers. This is coming from the Prophet 6, so now I'm trying to find the lead melody and sound. 
this is a part of a song that I usually take a lot of, a lot of time to make it special. Here in this session I try to make a very quick decision, otherwise we sit here till tomorrow. So what I wanted to say, take your time with important elements. The lead melody has to be special, catchy. So here I'm just messing around and see what's possible. Yeah, that sounds good. Here I've just recorded some MIDI notes. A little loop I like. So sometimes I play around with the keys, but sometimes I also use my mouse, or both. This is like a preset from a previous song. So I just start from here and change the sound. Adding some Clyde, that it has these pitchy kind of sound. Some chorus. So this is already happening in the synthesizer. The chorus effect, for example. Prophet 6 has a very, very smooth sound, but sometimes, in my opinion, it's missing a bit of saturation and the distortion kills too many high frequencies. So I'm gonna try my analog heat from Electron to add a little bit more saturation. This is my patch bay. I have all my in and outputs from all the instruments and effects connected here. So it makes it easier, for example, to send Prophet 6 into my analog heat and then back to the sound card. I just can't do that with those small patch cables. This is a really nice way, but sometimes you have like little problems that it's noisy or whatever and then it takes hours to find a mistake. <laughs> But that's okay, it's still a great way of routing in your studio. So this is my analog heat to add some saturation on distortion. Finding the right position of the ADSR envelope. Resonance and cutoff. I think I need a hi-hat. This is my analog rhythm. So this is mostly how I start songs in my studio. I jam around with the gear I have doesn't mean that digital plugins are not good, but I just like the workflow, you know. For example, here right now I'm standing, I'm not sitting. I'm walking around my studio and I can dance a little bit. I really like that. Adding a tom as well. The tom from the analog rhythm is amazing. Together with the percussions from the production music live sample pack. Trying to create a 
Synergie Together. This is my model samples where I have some samples I like on the sampler. It's a nice tool, but what I don't like on model samples is that I always have to stop and play that it's synchronized. If I play it just randomly in the song, it's not synchronized, so I always need to go on the beginning of the song, that's really annoying. That works better with the analog rhythm. But Electron does amazing stuff. You see how they're talking to each other? Don't overload your songs. Always see if a sound makes sense or not. Why is it there? What function does it have? Especially with drums. In the club you don't need so much. And like in the past my songs were so overloaded. But now I really try to reduce myself a little bit more. Because I just realize in the club you don't hear that additional shake a loop. You don't need like 10 hi hats. Reduce yourself a little bit and work it out. Sound design your sounds. Now the electron rhythm, all the samples, and the percussion loops all together. Listen to the hi hats. The offbeat hi hat, for example, has like a cutoff. It's more like in the background, almost like a shaker, noisy shaker. And the height from the analog rhythm is a bit higher. So they all have kind of space. So I'm always messing around a lot, but at the end when I record something, record the drum machines I'm changing a lot as well or deleting a lot as well. Really cool snare loops. Trying to find a clap or a snare. A lot of details in those loops, you can make a lot out of it. The track delay is very useful, especially for percussions. For example, if you put the snare a little bit before the kick, like just one or two milliseconds, it can like really fasten the song. Try it out, especially with the kick or a snare. And sometimes hi-hats can be like one milliseconds later than the kick, for example. That's all things you can create groove. This is the plugin connected to my Sub 37. I really like it that you can save your presets. So let's find a bass sound. Oscillator 1, then there's a sub oscillator, then oscillator 2, oscillator 1, and sub. They are connected to each other. Now I'm finding, trying to find the right waves to make that bass powerful. The low end, especially from the sub oscillator, is so strong. 
adding a little bit of multi drive never hurts my moog goes into this preamp from universal audio this adds a little bit more saturation i have also my microphone connected to that preamp so i can switch from MOOC to microphone. Especially with microphone and vocal recordings, this is game changing if you're using preamp. Okay, let's focus on the song. I'm using external instrument channels for my synthesizers. And the cutter from my MOOC doesn't work. I need to repair it. <laughs> That's why I'm using the auto filter instead. As I said, a dip around 200 hertz doesn't hurt. Not necessary. Those frequencies. This is my favorite plugin for cleaning sounds. On the left side you have the mono section, on the right side you have the stereo section. This is uh, especially with pads where you have like some low end and a lot of free were very helpful. Because then you can cut the low end just from the stereo section. But keep it in the mono section for example. So working again on the kick drum. Finding the right length. Then I have like here a low cut at the moment 36 hearts can be also higher around 40 then it feels a bit more punchy so in between jamming I also sometimes feel like ah, okay this is good or maybe this feels like too much I need to kind of clean my ears start from the beginning just listen to kick percussion and mix it a little bit to understand what's actually going on instead of layering and layering sounds it's so always see what are your sounds doing do I need them do I need to change them do they fit well into the mix Trying to find a bass line here. Ew. Yeah, that's a low end. One octave higher felt a bit too high. the Clyde is a little bit on in the bass. Sounds smooth. Bit too much Clyde. So let's see if this is in tune. I'm trusting my ears, but I'm trusting my computer more. <laughs> Especially um, in summer when the room gets higher temperature since can change their tune so before recording just double check if everything is like more or less in tune it doesn't have to be always perfect I think that makes a song also organic and alive but can be helpful now let's work on the Prophet 6 lead a little bit adding some delay here As you can see, I didn't record the synth yet, everything is still in live mode. I like that because I want to change effects and at the same time changing the sound at the synthesizer. Otherwise I would be too limited.
I like to test the synthesizers if they can make action in the break, turning up the release and decay of the sound and also the cutoff. That works pretty well with that sound. It has like a little bit of noise as well, which is helpful for the action in the break. This is my Novation Peak, using it mostly for pads or lead sounds. Beautiful synthesizer. Digital analog engine. So this one, for example, is always in tune, that synthesizer. Sounds great. Going back to the sample, because I felt I have to mix it a little bit. So I'm always jumping from here to there, mixing a little bit, understand what's going on. Don't forget about sounds. Show them some attention. such a cool sample loop, it really makes the tone of the song and creates already a, an atmosphere I really like. The danger is EQ, I really like to make low cuts. It has a certain kind of sound when you make a low cut. Having this from Plugin Alliance and I really like it to use it for kicks and bass. playing around with the peak. Just a little chord for a pad to underline the atmosphere. Sorry that these dogs always pops up. I forgot to turn it off before I record the jam. <laughs> that can happen, I guess. Panning is a very good tool to make space in your song and especially with pads that's wonderful because pads can be in the stereo field while you have your lead for example a bit more in the middle, in the center. So this panning effect from Sound Toys I really like. I also like that it has like different knobs to change the sound if you open the plugin. I mean, if you open the full section in the plugin, you will see like different knobs to change the sounds. And this is also part of the sound design. Here I'm trying to work out the pad and always check if it's possible to open it and how it sounds there. So here I'm just writing some MIDI notes for my Behringer Pro 1, what I like to use for noises. Noise hi-hats, to be specific.
also possible actually a great way to create drums is opening synthesizer playing around with noise lfo resonance filter envelopes Organizing my session a little bit, always have like kick first, then bass, then clap, hi-hats. If you do it like this, you have a routine and you always know where is what. I always color my percussions in a dark green, my hi-hats in a more bright green. And then I have the same in my live set. Like the clips in my live sets, I color same as in my productions. So it just knows what's going on without spending too much attention. This is the pad. The little low cuts doesn't need to have a low end here because we have the bass already. Getting side chained as well from the kick. Here we go, sounds like a loop. Everything's still in live mode, sub 37, pro one, hi hat sound, peak and profit, everything's live. This is an equalizer from Slay Digital. I'm searching for frequencies I want to push and I'm also searching for frequencies I want to turn down a little bit. Let's see how that would sound in a break. Hide from the model samples still on. Just turn on the volume and from the analog rhythm as well. Okay. Walking to my Juno 6. Actually, it's a Juno 6 from my studio partner, Ewan. And I guess he has to clean it up. Juno 6, we really love this warm 80s sound and we have it in most of our productions. Really, really nice synthesizer from the 70s, 80s. Playing around, looking for a sound I could add to the song. Back to the track, let's see how we can implement the Juno 6. Duplicate the melody just to have something and then go from here. So, here yeah, I'm just trying to find the right melody. We do a little jump till I have something. So, we made here just a little jump. For two minutes where I'm messing around with the melody, trying to up some things. I thought that's boring for you. So here we go with something that has potential. Mm. 
now I'm adding the first return channel Valhalla Vintage Reverb I like to use for synthesizers and other things too. Sending it to my summing mixer from SPL. Adding reverbs is like the sun goes up. Beautiful. Yeah, sounds a bit off. So behind the Juno is like a little knob to tune it. As I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. Music's alive. If not, everything is clean and perfect. Some artifacts are always good. This sounds already like this could happen in a break when the long bass line comes in. Decapitator, very wonderful tool for saturation. I'm just doing quick decisions here without explaining why. I think it's more about a feeling. Too many high frequencies in my synthesizer, my mastering engineer is complaining about it. <laughs> so make sure to add high cuts as well as low cuts. But, you know, in the low end, not too much, not too aggressive. Just at the right frequency. But we don't have to make a high cut at one kilo hard or something in the synthesizer. We need those low mid frequencies. Back to the drums. Now I'm recording my analog rhythm. I think now it's time to get everything a bit more together that we can slowly start with the arrangement. What I'm doing here, I'm first record like the full loop everything together and then I just mute the sounds and record it separately in solo mode. So I have duplicated the loop and just looking for the for the sounds. This is like the hi-hat so I keep it in a small loop that's enough. Use the transient shaper from Ableton to shorten it a little bit, as I really like to do it with hi-hats. It just feels more groovy. And then, of course, I sound design it again. Transpose it down, for example. Just to see how it sounds with the low cut filter, I'm putting the mute from the auto filter on my keyboard, like on my computer keyboard that I can just turn it on and off. Ah, the toms are so powerful from that instruments based on synthesis, not on samples. But you can also import your own samples, that's great. This is my noise hi from the Pro 1, messing around with the 
release and decay. It definitely has too much frequencies in the law that you don't need, but I'm sure I will add a low cut at some point. That's a decay. Here I'm just recording jam with the Pro 1. Jam means just record and playing around with the decay. This is my hi -hat. You see how it looks differently. This is the beautiful thing on analog. It's not static. And all of this together makes it more organic. Sometimes it's not about does it sound better or not. It's also about does it add like little movements. Of course you can do everything digital as well, but this is like this feels like just organic to me. You just put it on the right place that it synced. Because of the latency it's obviously not always synced. So you have like my basic loop and then I prepare a loop for my break with an open decay. Make some noise and action. Wonderful. Now I'm recording also the model samples. Everything needs to be in the session now. Funny rim shot with a plippy sound and reverb. So if I feel like I just record the reverb, even if I can't change it anymore. Just decision, record and it's done. From my perspective now I would have recorded without reverb. Sounds a bit too metallic. Ah, okay. Here I'm turning it off. Again I'm just muting the sounds while recording and then cut out the loops. The hi-hats, it's cool, like a shot, noise shot, more like powerful on the mid frequencies, sounds like a techno hi-hat, and then the analog rhythm hi-hat is a bit more exciting in the highs and is kind of over it. And then here a groovy hi-hat. So this is sample based and you can see it's pretty static. You can change it manually, like each sound for example in the velocity. But compared to the Pro 1, it's different. Transpose it down, because I just felt like that's the right way to do. From my perspective now the analog rhythm groove doesn't make so much sense, but in this moment I made the decision to take it. So I produce music and then I try to forget about it like for a week or two and then listening with fresh ears you always find details you didn't recognize during the production because you're too focused on it, but with a little bit distance you can maybe rework it out. So I recommend to produce music like a song maybe in four days, like really falling into it, but then also keep space in between the last touch, like mixing, 
breaking out details can be very helpful. Just take a weekend off and then work again on it. But what I don't like is to work like over a couple of months on a song. If I have a good idea, then I can work it out fast, or should work it out fast. If it takes too much time, then it's probably something wrong with the song. Here I'm adding a track spacer that's like a sidechain effect that I really like. And you can choose like the frequency, like a low and high cut. So now it's only sidechaining in the low end, but the high frequencies from the bass don't get a sidechain. That's more like a technical plugin instead of a musical plugin. Then I'm adding the Pultec Pro Legacy, making a dip here around 300 200 hertz. We don't need that. And then I'm also boosting around 30. 30 hertz and for everyone who want to tell me the legacy doesn't sound so good as the original I'm already on it to get the full version also want to thank you for some recommendations in my previously sessions really appreciate that there's always something you can learn So the bass sounds a bit more controlled now, with a bit more low end and less mid frequencies. Here I'm adding my second return channel, that's a drum verb. But before I felt like sound designed a tom a little bit, a bit more saturation. And a small room. So sometimes I just put reverbs on the channel and sometimes if I know I will root more sounds to the verb, like for example the synthesizer reverb or the drum group reverb, then it has to be in the return channel. Here the snare drum gets a little bit compression. I think it makes sense to compress the attack from the snare a little bit. That also relaxes the mastering limiter at the end. So sometimes it's also good to add a limiter on your full sum and then do the mix the volumes while the limiter is running. Just as a little idea. It can be helpful sometimes to find the right volume position. See how a limiter would react on your kick and snare, for example. So you have like a drum reverb that I really like, so I just load it in. It's like my kind of preset I've made previously. And um, now I'm sending the drums into the reverb. Some a bit more, some a bit less. And the reverb is very short, not a long reverb. It creates space and room, but it doesn't take too much energy. The orchestral drums I'm sending on the long reverb, that they're a bit more in the background compared to snare and rim shot, for example. Play around with rooms, try different rooms small rooms, long rooms, EQ for the rooms, very important for the depth. As you can see I spend a lot of time with my drums, I just think kick bass drums need to be tight and sounding good.
I always go back and forth, just work it out. Here for example I had the feeling the percussion comes a bit too often, so I changed the position of it. You can also do this in the arrangement mode, no problem, I'm still in the clip mode. At some point I go to arrangement mode and then it's also a bit better to not only listen to how sounds react, but you can also see how they react. So this is topic mixing trumps at the moment. Again, searching for frequencies, I like to push the hi-hat and for some I want to turn it down a little bit. It gets a bit more highs, a bit less mids. And here I'm adding like a very, very short delay. like a slap delay and that's I'm, I'm doing this because it creates kind of a room just feels a bit more organic in the mix now so you can try that out very 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 short slap echoes on drums and then just a tiny bit and listen what it does in my opinion you can place your sounds better into the mix and it's not so static anymore Here with the delay I put my hi-hat very in the stereo field, I explained this also in the latest jam already. You delay only one side and then it feels like it's very wide, the sound is very wide. That's a good trick to make a stereo image big. Again some EQing, don't be shy to push frequencies, some sounds really need it. So sometimes I go crazy with the EQ, here adding 10 dB for example. Why not? If it sounds good, it sounds good. And for this Hyatt I would like to have a different room compared to the others, to place it somewhere else in the mix. The Valhalla room sounds really like dimensional, I can really put sounds in the back of the mix, what I really like. And again, check the DK, so short. Don't use just the preset, play around, listen what it does and then make a decision. Infinite EQ, um, sometimes I use it because it it's, feels very soft, it's not so intense, I like it sometimes for cleaning. Turning down this frequency, that sounds a little bit belly. Hi-hats together. So now this is already recorded. I have this loop for my arrangement and for the break. As I said, this has to get a low cut. Noise has a lot of low ends that's unnecessary for hi-hats. And I'm trying to find frequencies I don't like. So you can do this with every sound, clean it up. And don't listen always in solo mode. See how they work together. Turn on hi-hat, turn it off, turn on clap, turn on kick, 
back and forth all the time. See how they work, how the, the single sounds work together with each other. And then of course the sum. Uh, my fast hi-hat, I really like to pan with a fast panning. Create space again. It's maybe a bit more interesting. Hmm. Changing the transpose at this point of the production. Why not? Overdrive from Ableton I like to use on Hyatt's. I like that it has like this filter. So I'm just searching for the part I like, drive it a bit, changing the tone or not can be helpful to make your sounds a bit more massive and fill the frequency fields because overdrive adds, you know, it adds low end for example. But here we cut it already. Again with the notch filter searching for some nasty frequencies you don't want to have and listening together. I put this channel on the sides or actually delete it because I don't need it anymore. The synthesizers I always keep on the side of my session just in case I need to record again but with this sound I'm sure I don't need to re-record it because it's just a hi-hat and if I have to it's easy to do that again. space and depth with panning in the mix. Panning, reverb delays, this is like your main tools to create space and depth. Just checking if this has enough energy for the break and drop. And also making myself a bit exciting. Also important when you do sessions. Be happy with what you have achieved. Don't be too critical to yourself. With time the production gets better. And then just spend a lot of time in your studio. And you will see, you will just do steps by steps into a very good direction. So it's kind of, we have the bass in the low end, then we have the profit six more in the mids, and the pad is rounding this up, and then the profit is on top of it. So everything is in the right place, you know? It's not, even if they're like playing together, it's not crashing each other. Here's a good moment to grab a coffee and we go into the next step and change in arrangement mode. So here we have the clips now in arrangement mode. I'm just starting now from the beginning and see what elements I should start with. For sure the kick drum. I mean, not for sure, but in this session for sure. Because I want to make it able for DJs to play. I want to make like a basic arrangement. Like, it needs to work in the club. Such a cool sample. Really happy I choose this one.
low cuts from the kick drum. So the profits I gonna automate at the end. So this won't be so open. The filter won't be so open. If you have something like this, maybe don't show off everything, like the full melody. You can start like for example here just on one note, same with bass lines. You can start on one note and then later change to the melodic part. But the transition needs to be made smart, otherwise it can be confusing. So now I'm already playing around with the cutoff from the Prophet 6, but I will write that automation later um, in the MIDI clip. So here after 16 bars could be like a little, like this is like the intro for DJs mixing it and then like a little break, you know something's coming and surprisingly it's the bass line and I keep it on one note just as I said. Keeping bass lines on one note always creates a kind of a deep vibe, you know, if you don't have a melodic bass line it feels a bit more deeper what I like. With the bass line I also want to start with the... Look how, how smooth that sounds with the panning and the right EQing. It's just really well in the mix already without doing a lot. And now, you know, during arrangements, I keep going on mixing. It's like a static process during the production, mixing here and there, and then at the end I do a final mix down, fully focus on, on it. Again, I push the noise hi-hat where I thought it's necessary and I cut the high frequencies felt like it's not necessary. Hi-hat doesn't have to be always pushed only in the 10k area or something, you know, like between 2 and 5k, it's also important. There is like the punch. If you are struggling with your arrangement, this could be maybe a good session. Just, you know, I have like drums, kick bass, the sample, one pad, two melodies. Maybe you limit yourself, try to make a song with those kind of channels and then you can just copy the arrangement and see how it sounds. And I think you will learn from that too. You can always try like changing the elements, bring in the hi-hat first, then the snare, or the other way around. Just see what the song needs. Try it out, play it from the beginning again and again. And what I can recommend, till the first break, don't make it too complicated. The song needs to build up, DJs will mix it in, keep it simple. This is a problem sometimes when I work with clients like helping producers getting their songs done. Then I always see that it's just that they overcomplicate things. And if they keep it simple, the effect is so much more powerful. But I totally get that. Because when I listen to my music like from, I don't know, six years ago or something like that, like some songs are so chaotic and so unnecessarily complicated. Especially talking about arrangement. Of course, it's good to have complicated music, but the arrangement 
you know, it doesn't have to happen every five seconds, something new, kick off, kick on, whatever. The song needs time to build up and breathe. So here I have like my noise height that opens up. This is a helpful tool for transitions for going into a break or going into a drop. It's always helpful to have some transition tools. Breaking out the brake. As you can see, I decided to keep the profit still on one note. Don't show what we have. So try to make smart and interesting transitions with the elements you have instead of adding more and more. Here on the pad, I'm just layering an octave higher and the break for more excitement. And I decided to have to break a bit longer. So here's what I have realized in being a DJ and live act for so many years and playing in clubs. My break is maximum one and a half minutes. I think one minute feels perfect. Sometimes it's so annoying when there's like, it's <laughs> it's up to the club, of course. Sometimes it's just ongoing party, but sometimes it's like a bit of silence, you know, and then you have to wait for two minutes till it drops. And especially when you have clubs with two dance floors and you can hear the second dance floor and then you know now break is coming with one minute silence the effect is gone. So I compromised myself to don't do so extremely long breaks anymore and I also don't want to have totally silence in the break. That's just for what I'm aiming for at the moment in my productions. Here I open a new return channel. Um, this I also did in my previous session for PML with a reverb, overdrive, low cut and side chain at the end. So this is a nice effect for making noise in a good way. With noise I don't speak about white noise, I just mean like creating energy. So here I'm automate the hi-hat on the reverb. You see what happens. Very nice transition into the drop. And here the profit changed into the full melody, the bass line changed into the melodic melody, and then on top we have this new lead where I felt like I had to change some notes. I have to so often that I have a loop and at the end I'm changing so much while I'm arranging. So don't stick with the first idea. So here 
By mistake, I made an automation on the fader, but I always keep the volume fader clean and do it instead with the utility so that I can mix the fader. I really don't like that if there is an automation and I can't touch it anymore. The volume faders, I keep them clean and do it like with something else, with some plugins. My Moog plugin. I really like that that you can just save it like presets, like a digital plugin, but it's connected to my analog gear, and you can just like close and open the session and work again on the bass. Everything on one node the chord, the sub. Again, the transition with the noise hired into the drop. Remember, with the Prophet 6 and the peak, I'm still jamming around with the cutoff and the envelope. Just trying out what makes sense and what does make sense. Here on the bass, I have at the octave higher notes on the pads and also the profit that is changing. I like when in one moment different things happening or changing. This has like an emotional impact to me. Opening the release from the synthesizer and going back. Same with the bass opening the cutoff and then let the drop going back. Little break, I guess I will add some drums here. That's correct. Surprisingly, I know my way of production. <laughs> Uh, just for the record, I'm watching this video uh, two months after we have recorded the jam, so it's also new for me. As you can see, at the end I decided to use those orchestral percussion sounds that were before in the loop running all the time, just to use it here and there for doing transitions, for example, in the break, when there is a little break, um, before something new comes in. It's always good to have those elements to or place them in a moment where it's a bit more space for it, you know. For example, the orchestral sound has just more space when the kick drum is off, like here at bar 73, for example. So what I did here in the drop, you have to lead the new one, then it goes off, the drums come back and then I add the lead again. I mean that works always, but in this case it's enough for don't get bored and feeling like I need to add something more, you know. So here's like a quick second break and this is more or less the moment where the song builds down again. It's been a short arrangement, but uh, at the moment I prefer songs that are like five, six minutes 
also helpful for streaming platforms because they like it more when the song is not nine minutes or something like that. So we have the intro, kick bass comes in, then break already after one and a half minutes, pretty fast, drop, build up again, then a quick break before we build down. So now let's sound design the wonderful Prophet sound with the RC20. You know that probably from my other videos. This is a gold and blacken. Actually, my studio neighbor guy James Cohen recommended me to this. He has a lot of interesting knowledge about producing, mixing and mastering and you should definitely check out his mastering bonus on my PML masterclass. At the end you will find a session from him showing how he mastered one of my songs. So the RC20 plugin, I like the wobble that is like a bit of a kind of a vinyl kind of sound. It's pitchy so the sound gets a bit more organic and I also added here a bit of bit crusher. You can hear that especially in the high frequencies and here a bit of a slow compression. FG2A is the version from Slate Digital. Originally the LA2A, very good compressor for synthesizers as it's not so aggressive but it does its job very nice and smoothly. Playing around on the Prophet 6 again. Listening in solo modes, how the synthesizer are sounding together. Chord means it's basically duplicating the MIDI notes one octave higher or lower if you put it on minus 12 or plus 12. I felt like the sound needs a bit more power in the midst, so that's why I'm just layering it. And this is the crystallizer pitch delay from Sound Toys, granular echo synthesizer. That makes it a bit more special, dreamy. It has like a reversed delay. So there's a delay and then it's reversing the sounds and this can be very interesting and makes the sound more blurry some white noise. Also the RC20 here on the Juno 6 sounds. Again the wobble modes to make it a bit more organic, pitchy. Saturation. No, not today. <laughs> A little room with the space. And less amount of noise. Always adjust. So this feels now way better mixed than like 10 minutes before. Take your time to sound design your sounds and again listen in solo mode mute channels go back and forth kick bass synths together kick bass drums together drum synth together and so on okay this pack has more to offer here i'm using another transition tool for break and drop
kind of organic snare roll. And again, they have to work together. The nice reverb on the return channel. I have the feeling I need some more effects. Actually, I don't have really uh, effect sounds here. Using this noise to make a transition. For example, when the drums coming back, when you go into a break, same as the reverb on the return channel, same as the orchestral in those small breaks to announce something new is coming. So basically those transitions you can also do at the very end. You can just build the song and then you look for nice elements to add, like here. Makes sense to me. Adding a little low cut to the Prophet 6. That noise you can see is from the RC20 plugin. And now I start to write automations into the MIDI. Into the MIDI clip. So this for example, is the decay, I think, and then another number is like the cutoff, and so on and so on. So basically, you can control your Prophet 6 with the mouse. There is no plugin for this, so you need to go into the MIDI implementations. You find that usually online, and just write down the most important numbers and its functions. So I have like a list for my synths. And then after a while I know 102, for example, is the cutoff of my Prophet 6. And with different synthesizers, that's probably a different number. So I'm doing all those automations and then at the very end, I'm gonna record the synthesizer. I'm trying to make a good transition in the break. Cut off, decay, release are the important knobs here to introduce the full melody and then also go crazy just before it drops. Going back to the decay. And short again, filter again. Bass is doing its energy here. And we still have the Juno. Here I'm writing a little bit more reverb to the synthesizer before it drops. Listen to the sound of the Prophet, it's so interesting. What a bit crusher, if you use it mild and in the right way, can do to the sound. It's so much more present here. So here we are in the second little break again, building up attention with the DK from the Prophet and cut off. Here I'm adding the orchestra and the other pre-drop sound again and the noise again. So I can just, I know, I repeat this. If I have a drop or whatever, I just duplicate it, put it in the right position and I know it does its job. 
Here I'm consolidate all those clips. So I have one big clip and if I want to write the automations now in that clip, I can see the full arrangement from the first bar to the last bar. So I get an overview. I don't need this sound separated in different clips anymore. I think I'm just playing with the distortion here and at the same time with the cutoff to find the right position of the knobs. Just before the bass drops a little bit more attention on the pads, I turn up the cutoff and also send it on the return reverb effect. And then I go back with the cutoff and new elements coming in. You know, it's always like a little bit attention and then going back and new elements coming in. That's always the idea of this arrangement in this track. Here, you can see how I sound designed the sample from the beginning. It sounds so different. Remember, I transposed it up, used transient, the transient mode, Echo Boy, and now I'm adding a phaser effect. It's so groovy because of the transient shape I used. So it's, it's shortened the sound. Now the phaser makes it very interesting. So one sample, I used it twice in a song, but it sounds totally different, but they work together pretty good. Some EQing. If you wonder why I use sometimes an EQ from Ableton, sometimes from Fabfilter, sometimes from Slate, sometimes from Brainworks, I think they sound different. If I know I just want to make like a little dip and it's not like a main element, something more for the background, I just use an Ableton plugin. If I work on the lead, I would probably more use an brain works and work really detailed spending a bit more time on the queuing here these are just very quick decisions same with effect sounds i'm just using ableton plugin for the bass i would definitely use a different plugin like from Brainworks or fabfilter that sounds in my opinion better but it's also about saving cpu here what plugins you can use and how often Again, working on the transition with the pad here. Filter, reverb, automations. Padding is nice here on the pad. And the panning, especially on the pads, doesn't have to be always synced. It can be also in a free mode. You have tried to add a noise on the drop, but it's not necessary here, so I just delete it again. off from the pads again so you can see I'm working on different channels at the same time I'm jumping back and forth all the time listening changing listening changing make breaks have a coffee and again and again
slowly fade out the second sample with the phasing effect, that one. So we need to build up now. Means when it drops again, something has to change. Samples of pads has less notes, profit goes back on one note. You can do transitions when you build up something, but you can also do transitions when you build down something. But in my opinion, now the build down needs to be very mild, like fading out percussions, hi-hats, whatever, using reverbs at the end, filtering everything very smooth. Cause imagine now probably the DJ is mixing in the next track already, so it doesn't have to happen a lot in that track. The track's over, it's just about mixing it out in a smart way and natural way as well. Here you can make a jump. Here I've tried to build it down smoothly, also the bass gets a fade out because it's a bit strange sometimes when there's a heavy bass and it just stops immediately. And now I go back to the basic loop, almost the same that we had in the beginning. And you can definitely loop it at the end. I like that there is a possibility that you could loop it with your CDJ or whatever you use for DJ. So here we have our, I think, almost final arrangement. This gives us a nice overview. And now I'm basically listening again to the important parts of the arrangements, see how it feels, see what I wanted to change and also mixing at the same time. For example here, a little bit less attack on the noise hi-hat, so they are a bit more smooth. I think the transient designer or any transient designer is very helpful for trumps especially because it's all about the text. Sometimes maybe you don't need a compressor. If you have like a transient designer and turn down the tech a little bit, maybe that's enough to clean the transients or get the transients under control. Feeling like I need like a little more attention after the break, after the drop. So I'm just add like a simple off hi-hat on top. Here we have the sample. I just cut out the off hi-hat. I don't need the rest of it. It's like an open hi-hat, 909 wipe kind of sound. Color it in my bright green cause all my hi-hats and shakers have this color, everything's a bit organized.
this is like first you have like the break, people get exciting in the club, and this is like the part where they smoothly keep going dancing, you know. Keep the drum rolling here, keep the groove rolling. The pad is going up nicely. in the air and keep going dancing you know when I do the arrangement I also think about okay imagine I'm in a club now would that work what would I do would I stand would I go to the bar because it's boring because the break is like four and a half minutes or would I keep going dancing and then I make decisions So the Juno has constantly a little noise from its chorus effects. So I need to add a gate that it's that it doesn't create unnecessary noises in the track. That's why I didn't record the you know in the beginning because now I have like all the effects I want to have for the sounds and can do the last adjustments on the synthesizer itself. Here I'm adding a low cut on the reverb channel because you don't need low ends and the reverb is just m messing up your mix. So also clean your reverb channels please. Yeah, the noisy profit can also have a little dip in the high frequencies, maybe also high cuts, as I said. So this is like arranging and mixing at the same time. Usually I take way more time for mixing, but that's a jam here and I just want to compromise between doing it fast but still everything I really want to do, I want to show you and I want to do everything what's necessary to have a quite okay mixed track at the end. The cut-off filter from the Juno 6 I write is the plugins from Ableton because I can't send those MIDI like I can use the Prophet or with the Peak to the old Juno synthesizer. It's not possible. I can only send MIDI notes like keys. After the break, going back to basics, the basic loop. Here I'm EQing the pad. has some harsh frequencies we don't need because the pad should be soft in the mix, not so aggressive. 
If I click on that button, it also copies the EQ to the stereo section. More compression, again the FG2A or LA2A. Does a great job to control your synthesizers. And then at the end I use this Valhalla Shimmer for very long shimmery reverb. Low cut, as I said you don't need low end in the reverbs. That's a great tool if you want to have like big and wide reverbs. Perfect for pads and atmospheres. So we are pretty much done here with the track. As I explained earlier, everything goes out of different groups, out of Ableton. And then it goes into my summing box that you can see here. The SPL Mix Stream. And this signal goes into a LAV-free converter and that converts my analog signal again into a digital signal. With an optical toslink cable goes into my sound card and then I record the whole track. I think using a summing box is also maybe a bit of Studio Voodoo and it's really up to what gear you have but in my opinion it controls my low ends very good and everything is a bit more tight and I have a bit more depth. Um, I could figure this out especially when I'm playing live my old songs compared to my new songs. I like the the new songs recorded into my summing box way more in the club situation. But that's also a matter of workflow and a matter of taste. So nothing you have to do. But if you're interested in audio engineering, that can be really fun. Nice build up in the break. More, 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 more. Everything goes up and then focus on bass and a new lead melody from the Juno 6. Little break and keep dancing with the drums. Everything is still running live. At the end I would just record all those synthesizers, drag and drop the plugins from the external instrument channel to the audio channel. A more detailed view into my productions and my studio setup you will have in my masterclass for production music live that is really interesting like three and a half hours conversation with Francois from production music live and we were talking about my track transformation and I really show every little detail and explain why I'm using it why I'm using effects why I did this and this how I arranged and what was the idea behind the track and behind the arrangement. And as I mentioned earlier, there is also a bonus from my mastering engineer, Guy James Cohen, also based at Funkhaus Berlin. And I think that's really interesting. Thank you very much for watching the sessions. I'm really happy 
about all the comments, I would be also happy if you give me a follow on Instagram and follow my work and I make sure to keep going with tutorial videos and jam videos and I'm also currently working on a big sample pack for you guys. I hope that pushes your creativity and inspiration. Thank you.